Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're going to play with adding an addition to my sketchbook. I go over some of the sketches that I've done and today we're going to add this lavender field. Yay! <laughs> Super simple, easy to draw this. I'll show you how I draw this and paint it in. Just simple and fun if you're looking for a simple landscape to do and you know you're playing around, you've got a new sketchbook, you don't know what to put in there for an entry. Let's do a simple landscape. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, I have a little extra add-on at the end for the Patreon members and uh, if you want to be a Patreon member you can click the link in the description box. So we're going to paint this lovely landscape. If you have any questions, like I said again, leave them in the comment section. I was fortunate enough last year in the summertime to actually go visit some lavender fields in France. They're wonderful to see. Some of them were in bloom, most of them were not in bloom. The one we saw was in bloom which was great. It's wild. Um, so I loved it. I wish it was. I wish all of them were in bloom, but it's just like I keep thinking about that area and how pretty it was and all the purples and the colors. So I just wanted to paint it. So let's get started. So this is a um, sketchbook that I got. It's an eight by eight from Speedball. And I'm not sure if this is in my Amazon shop. I think it's there or not, or I have another one from another company that's similar. It's a pretty good um, sketchbook, with, you know, for what it is for cold press. This is some of the things I did this this one on Patreon. There's a little lighthouse in Newport, flower that's on YouTube. Some of these are on YouTube. Um, this is just some sketch. This is a uh, the room at the Chateau de Mars, the retreat I went on. This is a, one of the towns I went to in France. Um, this is some sketches from there in the fall. More florals. This is from that town, Segur le Chateau, beautiful town in France. Some more stuff like that. And some New York City. That's actually Rockefeller Center. <laughs> Seashells, patterns, uh, birds, and houses. Tuscany. This is, a, I think, a YouTube tutorial. Uh, fun flowers here. Yeah, this is another tutorial, I believe. This is from Charleston. Then I was in Big Sky visiting a friend, so you see that. This is a view from her place. And then we saw a guy fly fishing with the dog. Um, this is Big Sky also. This is in Yellowstone Park, one of the prisms. Uh, hello, my old faithful. And then the famous glacial boulder. So then I have these pages here. I thought I'd start to do something different. Maybe do like a simple landscape. Um, I've been playing around with just color lately. I'm thinking of summer and I was thinking about doing maybe like a um, a two spread that was um, like a lavender field. And I've done lavender fields before, but let's just make it out of a sketchbook, two spread. So I'm just gonna take my pencil here and I'll just go across. If I use a ruler, I could use a ruler. So no traceable here, people even if you're a Patreon member. And then you just figure the perspective, like the center where your eye, you want to go where your eyes are like either this way or that way for the fields. So we can start to just put some lines here. You know, the center and then keep going from here outward for the, the lavender fields. Right, going in that way. There can be some trees here. It's just going to be wet and wet. We can make like a little house over here. It's just um, a rectangle shape with a little roof. And put some cypress trees in front of it. Just little windows and a doorway. Nothing too spectacular. It's just a simple house. So I'm just testing the paper. I can just kind of scribble in some like cypress trees. Mm. This is kind of like a made up design. And I'm really just going to play with color on this. All right, there could be like mountains in the background. Like way, way back here. And I can put some more trees over here, kind of bleeding, bleeding wet on wet. And that's the simple. You just put another line across and put these little, from the perspective, going this way. And I'm just going to wash in the sky using my number 12 brush. I'll loosen up some ultramarine blue deep. I'm going to use this color a lot. It's going to make a really nice pretty purple for the lavender field. And with the sketchbook, you don't want to go super crazy with wet, wet on wet because, you know, it's not that kind of paper. It is not as 
like a hot, I mean, excuse me, like a um, 100% cold, cold pressed paper, 100% cotton, it's not going to soak up as much. So I'm just going to start to play with putting in the sky. I'm going to get this a little bit lighter by adding some more water. Ooh, I already got some on the paper there. So see how fast and loose with this brush? I'm just throwing the sky in. Go right over here. Sketchbooks are meant to be like just studying, having fun. It doesn't have to be serious. Just studying the area you're at. All that good stuff. I'm just doing it. See, it's already starting to buckle because it doesn't take a lot of really good wet color. And I do have a crease, so this is like a double fold here. I'm going on right here in the line. I could add a little more color. I'm going to keep it light, but I'm going to put some more color up here. So it's not going to do the bleed like an orange paper. You can try and play with it, move it around. You know, like I do my little go like this and bleed it. It will bleed a little bit. It's not going to be perfect like that kind of paper. Like I did in the Monet tutorial. It's good enough with the sky. I don't want to go too crazy. So for the fields, um, in between, there'd be some green and some brown areas. It went bleeding and blending um, purple uh, for the lavender, of course. The background here can add some browns and some like purples also for like the background, like fields slash mountains. But I'm going to concentrate on some of the purples and we'll add in some browns and some greens in between them. So got the ultramarine deep and I'll grab some lovely bright rose. And we've got nice, beautiful purple. The more blue you add, the more pink you add, the purple will change, right? And it will get a little bit deeper coming this way and a little less going that way. I'm going to loosen up also some burnt sienna and we can kind of blend and bleed some of that too. So here we go. I'm going to start to grab some of my purple. Oh, now see, I don't know if you noticed this in sketchbooks, but I put, I, obviously my fingers were touching this, so it's kind of created a resist. Not the greatest thing ever, but it is. I'm just going to start to stick in some of this purple. You can grab some deeper color by mixing the blue and the pink again, but less water. It's a little deeper, a little thicker. And you can start to play with bleeding it a little bit. And even some browns in here on the side. Getting a little deeper. I'm going to go back and grab some purple. I want more on the blue side than just purple, purple. But yeah, that resists. So you might have to wait until the color dries to go back over it so it won't be doing that. Like I said, the sketchbook, it's going to be a little more difficult to do the wonderful bleeding like you would in arch paper. But I'm taking my time with this. Just kind of filling in the lovely little field. See, it's resisting here too. I'm going to play around with bleeding the color on the edges. So I'll grab some brown and I'll make some greens too with the Prussian blue and cadmium yellow deep. So cadmium yellow deep and Prussian blue make a nice green. We can start to play with bleeding that in between the little field part, the purple and some browns kind of tapping those in as well. Yeah, see that paper starts to buckle. I probably should have taped this down too so I can hold it down with the, the palette. Just kind of loosely sticking in and grabbing some burnt umber too. Just kind of filling this color in here. I'm working like mostly here and then I'll come back over here. You'll see me grab this, more blue. Don't want to get too wet. It's getting a little too wet, but it's getting 
uh, on the side here. Clean up my brush a little bit. Just kind of wisping that color in here. You see that? The movement. I don't need to go to the edge of the paper. Adding in some more blues. You can add in more pinks too. And just kind of fill that in. Again, it's just a study. It's not something super serious of a lavender fields. I was fortunate to see some lavender fields. It wasn't super in bloom. It was blooming in some areas. Uh, Valensol last summer in June. But the super high peak, I, I need like another week to hit that super high peak to get the real intensity of the color. Some parts were, but not everywhere. It was cool to see them though. In France, where everyone goes and there was lots of uh, influencers taking photos, hilarious. So again, I'm doing the same thing, adding in some blues on the sides, some deeper colors on each side of this. Get even deeper and thicker with the color. Woo, that one's a little too much. But again, it's just a, it's a sketchbook. Kind of blend some of this. Darker on the edges of these. And we'll add some deep color here. Just kind of filling that in. Don't be afraid to have like a sketchbook with hard edges and everything doesn't have to bleed and blend. Some of them, my favorite paintings that I've ever done have basic hard edges to them. So it looks a little deeper, darker here. I might want to lift some of this paint a little bit. It's a little too dark here. Just lift it a little bit. So lifting is taking your brush, kind of using it as a mop, tapping it back on the paper towel. You see how I removed kind of that paint? That's called lifting. And the sketchbook is going to be a little bit different when you're lifting than it is on a lovely cotton paper. I'm going back and adding some more color here. It's a big main one in the middle. OK, I'm playing a little bit more with color again, adding some more in here. And then we're going to go in and in between those lovely little fields here, adding the greens and the browns. And can we do some little peaky kind of wispy um, lavender? So see, just kind of making these lines like that. I'll take my browns and some of the greens. I'm going to tap those in here. A little more green than brown, actually. I like the green better. In between the little lines that we drew. A little skinnier down here. A little thicker in the front. Right here, some green. Getting some more Prussian blue in here. You want it kind of pretty. You don't want it so muddy and ugly. Just going in here. So on those lines that you drew, you're just going to take some greens. Like so I mix up, I mix my greens. I don't like to take them from the tube. So now we've got the lines happening in here to, to you know, show you with a, the kind of like, those are the fields and right? their perspective is this way. We can start to play with adding in some different tones. So I'll grab more of the pink here and play with adding some of the pink in some areas. And I can bleed some of this green too. It doesn't really want to bleed because it's not that paper. It's just sketchbook. All right, so we're going to let that kind of just sit there for a little bit dry before I go back and add some more pink. I think it's just not the kind of paper you want to play with that. The background here, kind of mix this. All this good stuff, whatever you have on your palette. Get like a nice purpley brown. You can add more brown to it. Play with that. Even add a little more yellow. And play with adding in like the back field. And get a little more brown. We still have a little house in our green trees. Ooh. 
could be a little bit lighter. I'm going to add some more yellow, cabin okay, yellow deep. You could make it more blue than brown. I'm going to do a blue one here. And go back over here. I don't want to touch my house. I want to keep that white still. Just put in a simple little hill right there. Oh, that's drying. We'll think about the back one would be more of a purple one, blue purple with some brown in it. So I'll add a little burnt sienna into my ultramarine blue. If it's still wet, it will bleed into each other, but we're going to play with putting that color in. You can separate with a little line of white if you have to. Mix all of this good stuff. Use the palette you have with all the colors and play with them. So there's like a little hill back here. And then we'll play with putting in some trees and filling in the house and adding some more depth. So I'm going to let this baby dry for a couple minutes and come back. For the house, I'm going to grab my Princeton 10 round Neptune, uh, Velvet Touch series, make like a terracotta color. I'm going to take the burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of this red, cadmium red light. Let's see if I like that. And then just water that down a little bit. And that would be the lovely little terracotta house. I'll add the roof in a second. It could be white if you didn't want to use this color. I think it's a pretty color. See a lot of terracotta out there. And then of course, simple trees, yellow, Prussian blue, a little burnt umber. Oop, a little too much burnt umber. That's more Prussian blue to make it really dark and deep. So we have the two different greens and yellow, Prussian blue, but a nice pretty green. And we'll just take our brush and just push down like this on the side. You just go like this, push down, and you create those little pretty cypress trees. And of course, it requires a little bit deeper color too. So you can kind of blend and bleed that. You can put more than that. I might have like a couple more flanking like that house. And then over here, you can play with adding some of these over here. They have funky trees like everywhere, just like they do in Italy and France. And then they have simple trees. I'm going to add some brown, green, kind of play with kind of tapping in the color of the trees and kind of mushing it on the bottom. I know they look like little pokey things. And just kind of tappy tap around and add some kind of goofy trees just like that. Just kind of wiggle the paint. Indicate more green trees back this way and tap. I don't necessarily like these trees so much but I might remove this one. How do you do that and still have your background, Ellen? Oh, many different ways. You can play with moving things around. Go back and add my lovely purple, dirty brown background. It's like it never happened, right? <laughs> Just kind of erasing that tree that I didn't like. Which is fine. You can do things like that. You can play. That's what the sketchbook's about. See, I'm doing the lifting technique. And I can go back in and add some thicker paint, chartreuse kind of greens, and it will just not as move. It won't move as much, and it'll just kind of offset that goofiness that I kind of erased. But it looks nice there. And I'll add some kind of wispy browns kind of happening here in between these trees. Just getting some more tones going in here. Um, it's a sketch. It's nothing serious, right? And then I'll remove all this lovely mm. stuff. Mm. And we're going to finish off with some more lavender. Again, you can take this brush and kind of wisp up 
some little stems we can splatter a little bit i'm going to kind of bleed some of this darker color here over in here hold the brush like this on the side and kind of wisp like this and grab some water clean it off and just like this really simple A little bit darker here by the house. It's just fun to play in your sketchbook. It doesn't have to be serious. All right, I'm getting a little bit deeper. And down here. Many colors. You're not going to get the same kind of, like, like I said a million times, but the wet on wet with these sketchbooks are just not meant to be like that. So you have to just kind of play with putting color on color and glazing kind of techniques. I'm adding a little pink. I'll change that lavender up a little bit. Some pink out here. The bleeds. That's fun too. Grabbing the browns and the greens. Mostly the greens going in between them again and then we can have some deeper color of the purple kind of on the edge so like kind of in here on the edge of the greens in the front a little bit so I made a little more deeper, darker, and add some like uh, burnt sienna in here, just to kind of give some of this stuff a little bit deeper depth in this section. I don't have to do that everywhere. Just in a, like, one little section, just to give it a little bit more oomph. Like I said, this paper is not conducive for bleeding color. You're gonna have to play with color upon color. I'm going to add some more purples in here. I'm also going to go in and uh, do a little splatter. I'm adding some more pink. This lovely bright rose. Again, you can get a little more depth kind of where it meets the, the lovely little green. I can hold my brush on its side. Kind of just go like this. I'm kind of doing a circular motion. You see me going like this? Kind of filling in that section. And I'm going to get a little bit deeper here as well. Just a little more depth, you see? Then we added that darker color. Just having fun with this. Get a little more brown here. So I'm just gonna take a piece of paper, kind of cover this area. I just want the splatter to kind of concentrate it down here. The paint's a little on the thicker side. So it doesn't go on the top. You want it to be splattering in the sky. Nice thick color here. All right? Same thing over here. Oh, I've got a little over there. That's all right. Kind of goes everywhere, right? <laughs> Mostly down in the front. You want to add another little layer of terracotta to the darker side. This is maybe the sun's coming this way, so this side would be lighter and then this side's going to get darker so go back over this with a deeper color of the terracotta the same two colors just a little bit thicker and then the roof i'm going to make gray with um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna you can make a terracotta roof but i'm going to make mine gray just fill that in 
and the edge here. And I'll use those same two colors for the windows and the door. It's a little bit thick here. This is the door. I wait till this dries to do the windows. And I also want to put in the shadow. And I can actually use those colors for the shadow as well. So that's dry. So that's dry. I water that gray down I just created. All right? Make it really kind of loose and wet. Tap it on my paper towel, and I can put the shadow on the house if it cooperates. Remember, this is not really good paper. It's kind of meh, so it doesn't want to cooperate, which is fine. You got a little shadow happening there. Not the greatest. <laughs> While that's drying, you can even take this bright yellow chartreuse color, wisp up some grasses in the front, give it some more interest. So that's all dry. I'll go back in with those two colors again, thick paint to create the windows. See, here we go with the windows. Simple door. You can kind of see the windows through the shadow. <laughs> and then we're just playing around this point with foliage, greenery, can add some little greenery kind of on the bottom here, the house in front of it, a little bit of foliage. So it doesn't look like it's floating, you know? And that's a simple, simple uh, way to do a lavender field for your sketchbook. If you're playing around with things like that, if you're looking at lavender fields, I would just want a sketchbook entry. You know, I may tweak it by adding some more depth um, in the background my little hill here that I painted. Remember, it's not the same as Arsh paper, so you're going to have to be gentle with it. But have fun. So I hope you enjoyed this little sketchbook entry. Um, Patreon members, stick around. I'm going to add a little bit more stuff to it. And if you, want to be a Patre if you want to be a Patreon member, just click the link in the description box. And I have extra add-ons, extended videos, exclusive tutorials, you know, Facebook group, um, all kinds of stuff at Patreon members. It's they're just uh, Patreon is a place where people can support my channel here on YouTube. And YouTube's free content, so Patreon's where people help support me for what I do on YouTube. So go check it out. See if you like it. You can cancel anytime, and I really appreciate it. So take care, everyone. I hope this was a fun little entry for you for your sketchbook. If not, something you can think about. Simple. I mean, really, I just drew lines, and then these lines come out from here, a simple little house, and the trees, and you have a cute little painting. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.